would often go there To the tiny church there The smallest church in San San Postcards are funny little things, aren't they? A photo made by someone else that you can send to your friend to show off the place you visited. Carefully shot and doctored to make your vacation spot look interesting, captivating, or, if nothing else, deliver a crude joke to the addressee. A bit of a relic because, let's be honest, when was the last time you sent a postcard or received one from someone that is not several decades older than you? Yet they persist all over the world, purchased as memorabilia, even if the buyer has no intention of sending them. Perfect little snapshots of places far away, frozen in time. And in the weeks that separated the original release of Disco Elysium and me playing it, I received a lot of postcards from Revachol, the fictional city in which the game takes place. By postcards I of course mean screenshots. And I was genuinely worried I'm gonna hate that place. Like they were all the type of cards that have nothing good to show, so they try and win you with an off-color joke. I also didn't know what it was trying to tell me with its title. Disco Elysium. So is it gonna be all Crystal Balls and Elvis? About free spirits caring about nothing but having fun, a paradise for those who love catchy music and flashy clothes? Well, there was one way to find out. I got the game, booted it up and instantly realized that the game is not about the drunken, exhilarating nights of obliterating dance floors. It's about the morning after. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Have you ever seen the Pixar movie Inside Out? It's a game version of that, except the protagonist is not a pretty girl sad about moving away from her home, but a middle-aged wreck of a human being that is supposed to be solving a homicide case. With his memories obliterated by alcohol, drugs and who knows what else, the detective has two anchoring points for his identity and the direction he should take. His assigned partner for the case, Kim Kitsuragi, an angel in human form with frankly absurd amount of patience, and himself, or rather parts of himself in the form of his skills, emotions and compulsions. Inside Out deals with 5 emotions, this collision breaks it up to 28, ranging from your physical endurance and mental composure to stuff like imagination, gut feeling, hand-eye coordination or the combined super sense of being addicted to every single psychoactive thing that exists in the city of Rebashol. And they all have a voice. The bigger part of the detective they are, the louder they are. For example, if you put no skill points into empathy, it will never chime in and you'll be left clueless about feelings of the people you talk with. But if you put all your skill points into empathy, it will not stop chiming in, drowning out all other thoughts you might have and flooding you with frankly unhealthy amounts of sympathy for fellow human beings. Not to mention, events outside of your control made a fair few of them feel disdain towards you, and feeling sympathy for that isn't exactly pleasant either. That is pretty much the entire mechanical heart behind the game. Roll 2d6, add skill value, check against the threshold. With the caveat that not exactly all skill checks are there for your benefit. It's a refreshingly honest video game adaptation of the tabletop RPG experience, with no tact on combat systems that interfere with the plot every few scenes. Everything else is text. Glorious, snappily written and presented text, now with full voice acting thanks to the final cut release of the game. <laughs> oh, I, I can't fuck. He lost his ass. He still got his wiener. I'm not going to. Ask him. <sighs> Sergeant Dorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. Now is a good time to say fuck and ass and so on. That'll make this all right. <clears throat> That's a negative. Not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <clears throat> Sure, her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. 
tell him to apologize right now. <clears throat> Sergeant Dorson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. It's also worth noting that the player character is not the only wash-up in the game. If anything, you're surrounded by them. The city of Revachol is prosperous, bright and building tall, the former capital of the world, some even say. But that's not where the game takes place, or rather, that's not the part of it you get to see. The game takes place in Martinez, a district of that city where things come to die. It's the part of the metropolis that never makes it onto a postcard. Run down, full of businesses that closed their doors years ago, homeless people and kids on speed, still dotted by bullet holes and mortar craters made during the communist revolution that took this place half a century prior. Any parallel I might draw to real-life districts of prosperous cities is probably going to be hilariously outdated as it turns out these regions got gentrified, so I won't. Instead, Imagine if the October Revolution happened in the modern day. A communist movement successfully getting rid of the, frankly, completely incompetent and detestable monarchy. Can you warrant a guess how the rest of the globalized society would react? If your answer is sudden interest in keeping the peace, correct? Moralitern, the universe's equivalent of the United Nations, got in, boots on the ground, to make sure the city is nice and prosper and can sit at the same table as all the big boys and girls. They even went through a lot of trouble to do that, after all the continents are not separated by water but by a cold, uncaring void called the Pale. How nice of them. And the cost? Oh, a trifle, really. Just two societal systems ruined in a quick succession. They will build back, of course, just not where you're standing. That part will just hopefully rot away and die. But despite everything, they're still alive, both the detective and Martinez. Tormented by emotional and political hangovers, respectively, they still wake up the morning after and have to go on with their business. And the wonderful thing about time is that it heals all wounds, or so the saying goes. Check this out. Hey Kuno, what do you think of the socio-political situation that had no small part in ensuring that you live in a dumpster, are addicted to hard drugs at the ripe age of 12 and the society will leave you to die here? Fuck this Kuno, okay? Yeah, fair. This theme is reflected in the gameplay as well. No matter how many skill checks you fail and how many times you trip over your own legs, life goes on. Well, unless you die and it doesn't, but that's naturally something with a high chance of happening. But in general, every shot you take can be botched. And yet, the game just rolls with the punch and goes on. Sometimes failure means embarrassing yourself with a stupid name, sometimes it means not realizing how perfect a wall is for graffiti. But you will very quickly learn, through game mechanics alone, that failure is hardly the end of the world. The original script had a forced Dark Souls analogy and quasi-breakdown in here, Keeping with the theme of letting the past stay in the past, I will now omit it, but I acknowledge that artistic stumble of mine. Bleh. Failure isn't present in the game for you to learn from and eventually overcome. Failure is ever present. You will not escape it and you have to deal with it. Sometimes it can be just as interesting as success, if not even more. So it's okay to fail sometimes. But that's a platitude, isn't it? We've heard this song and we danced to it so many times before. Now we're all tired, hungover and full of regrets. The music sucks and all we want to do is go home, but we're stuck sitting in this nightclub of human folly. To say you need to move on from failings, personal or systematic, is easy. The real question is how? How do you gather enough strength to get out of the puddle of your own vomit to trudge forward and, inevitably, fail in a brand new, more interesting way? I believe the answer to that is hidden within another aspect of the world of Disco Elysium, the characters. Just like their portraits, they are a very colorful bunch, to the point of being caricatures. I already mentioned the goblin child that is Kuno, but there are also personalities such as aggressive gang leaders, a union figurehead that is so sleazy that he would probably slide on the floor if he ever got out of his chair, or dragged out party kids that speak in nothing but lyrics from songs by the band Scooter. But all of these are masks, facades made to ensure that nobody that would dislike this superficial part of you ever even asks you for a dance. They are still a part of you, a fixture on your face, but there is more beneath it. 
And as you get to know all these people closer, vile or nice as they may seem, there is always something deeper. But why would they show these cards to you instantly? It's not like some random junkie is the kind of person you want to open your soul to, is it? You need to dig, to pry, to really strike a nerve with them, to let the eyes behind the facade light up with even a glimpse of their true emotions. But if you manage to move them, you will see that each and every one of them is a real, complete person, not a stereotype from a cheap body cop movie. Luckily for you, the person you'll primarily interact with is the previously mentioned Kim Kitsuragi, the other detective sent to deal with this case, and, if we're being perfectly honest, a saint that is too good for both the sinful earth and especially for you. Seemingly a no-nonsense professional that fits the protagonist like a tourist tour fits Martinez, Kim turns out to have his own quirks. He has a sense of humor, hobbies, history with his own precinct, worldviews, traumas, etc. And if you just beeline the investigation and never take interest in him, you won't get to see even a crumb of that. Your unprofessional behavior, weird obsessions and eccentricities, things that one can consider to be failures of professional police conduct, are what make these things shine. Even in this interpersonal relationship, you can fail forward. And speaking of masks and keeping people at an arm's length, the main character is not safe from it either because of the thought cabinet system. As you come across different aspects of the world, thoughts pop up. Hey, maybe you should try being a communist or a feminist or feel sorry about your situation or talk about the upcoming apocalypse or maybe be the hustliest of hustlers trying to pinch pennies wherever you go. But once again, these are all masks social constructs that you can put on and use as they bring you advantages. Hell, you can be all of these things mentioned above at the same time and only let each aspect shine when it's the most appropriate. Or the funniest. All these social masks are also portrayed in a very stereotypical manner to say the least. Role playing a hardline communist and picking the option every time it's possible turns you into a frankly disgusting tanky that can cheerily tell a child that he'll be put against the wall and shot when the next revolution comes because his dad is rich. But hey, 2xp baby! But again, no matter what mask you put on, the detective is a defined character, even if he doesn't know it himself. He has a history, people who know him, addictions and traumas. Traumas that hurt so bad he'll try to be anyone to just not get close to being the old him and the memories it brings. He fucked up. We all fucked up at some point, maybe not as spectacularly, but still, we all try to move away from the past fuckups and become better. Hopefully, the masks we put on will let us meet the right people and do the right steps to truly pull off a dance move that will be remembered by all club goers for years to come. Except... I lied. Well, I lie a lot, that's what you do when you write anything, but I made a very specific lie in this video before. There is one mask that hides nothing, both for you and for any other character that wears it. What a tip? The name of this particular political ideology starts with F and refers to a bunch of sticks. That's right, if you thought of the other F word that refers to sticks, Please look into a mirror and reevaluate your life. Fascism, or traditionalism, as it's referred to in the game, is just hollow. You meet a few representatives of that ideology, like an old monarchist or just straight up racists, and if you listen to them and agree with them enough, you can equip it as well. And it brings nothing but pointless spite. There is just a void of value behind the facade. Because it doesn't hide anything, all these people are just stuck in a rut declaring themselves to be the best or romanticizing a glorious past that never was. And if you decide to be a traditionalist yourself, it deals you psychic damage every time you decide to do the same, and it implicitly drives you further into alcoholism. Because getting stuck in the past subconsciously brings all the mistakes of your personal history back into light. You do nothing but stay in that puddle of vomit you fell into, complaining that the music was better and so were the dancers at the bar a night ago when you were young and full of energy. It's just being a bitter shit and making the entire experience more miserable for everyone around you. And then you complain nobody wants to dance with you. Stop. For the love of life, just stop being a miserable piece of shit. Even if the music sucks, dance. Even if you trip against your own feet, dance. Even as people point and laugh at you, dance. 
Even if you collapse into a puddle of your own vomit, get up and dance. Somebody will join you, maybe because the mask you're wearing, or maybe because they like your moves. Hopefully it will be someone as cool as Kim, someone that will stick with you for thick and thin. And the group will get bigger. The music will change. Maybe you'll discover new steps among all the tripping. Maybe you'll change masks when you decide you don't really groove with the crowd around you. It might seem obvious that the easiest way to not make mistakes is to not do anything, but... Well, that's not why we're here, is it? Disco might be dead, only left in frozen still shots on postcards you bought in the past. But you're not, so keep dancing. And play Disco Elysium while you're at it. A game that on a postcard seemed to be jokey and superficial, but turned out to have incredible depths beneath the mask of a sad clown. Which makes it frankly terrifyingly good as a piece of art that not just presents a theme, but embodies it. And I don't even know how intentional that was, but frankly I do not care. I'm just happy I got to witness the moves it had to show me. Da -da 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 -da. That's the second and last remake I do. More things to come, though I do hope to do something more long form and analytical in the future. There's only so much I can recommend while dodging spoilers. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, now visible on the screen. Please consider joining this elite group of cool people to help me get my YouTube dancing lessons. Alright, I'm done with that analogy, but all support keeps me fed and motivated. Until next time, ta-da!